mic check one two one two you too what it do it's your boy d money back again with another video now granted first and foremost i'm going to apologize my bad i should have been had this video out to y'all but got caught up with work a bunch of other stuff going on but better late than never so there's always going to be ranks so you'll always have this to pop back on if you want to go back and take a look at any tip trick that i need to give you but this is it my guide tips tutorials whatever it is you want to call it i don't know yet i haven't decided but whatever rank and tips and tricks to get you through so if you are if you are a person that gets triple s on a regular clearly this video is not for you but i appreciate it if you take a look at it i'm gonna try to go through this as quickly as possible but it's going to be a little long with it i'm gonna be as detailed as possible to try to explain as much as i can explain so you know my style let's not waste any time let's go ahead and get to it okay so there so this particular rank this is just regular rank it's everything that you got in regs you got access to in this particular rank depending on where you finish in last rank will determine where you start in the rank this current rank so wherever you finish in this one will determine where you start in next season's rank so if you finished double s last rank you should have started at a rank this particular rank right and that's normally how it goes the same thing with triple s you triple s you usually start in a rank for the most part now it is a lot easier to hit triple s the first day you will go from s rank straight to triple s as soon as you hit 1600 and you will stay there until 60 other individuals get more than 1600 points now, once if if you let 60 people get ahead of you, then that will drop you to double S rank. It won't drop you back to S rank. It'll just drop you to double S. So that's why it's always the easiest to get there the first day because there is no double S. You just pretty much go from S rank all the way to triple S. As long as forwards, the best centers to run in rank would be a P6 Howl. A P6 Big Joe and a P6 Camilla. Okay, so the meta characters for power forwards in rank would be Fox above everyone else. So if you like Fox, P6 him as well. Double D is slept on, but he is actually meta. P6 Faye is a good option. Lastly would be Deacon. For small forwards, you only have a few options. Lou P6 would actually be your best option as far as small forwards, followed by Jack. Also, a P6 Rebecca is actually a solid option as well for this particular rank. For point guards, it's really only two options. It's been two options for the longest now. Um, option one, as far as the meta, is going to be Ayla. Option two is going to be Chloe. And now for the two guards. So, I'm sure everyone already knows, Ox Queen, hands down, is the best two guard in the game. You can play Ox Queen in every type of rank. Okay, for P-Bus, we're going to start with the centers. This is your bread and butter right here. Double rebound, double speed. If you want to add some shooting, take Luther off, go with Big Dog, it'll give you mid-range. If you want three-point success, add Lee. For power forwards, same thing. Double rebound. You don't necessarily need double speed on power fours, but you can. But power fours are naturally fast anyway. So if you want to add some shooting, you can go with Clark, three point success. But he also has normal movement speed. So I think he's the only other power four that actually gives you movement speed. So if you want to go three point success, you can either go Clark, who's the other one that gives it, or Lulu. If you want to go mid-range go with Murdoch small forwards nothing too complicated you can go double speed you can go three-point mid-range or if you just want OP three-point success you would take the mid-range off and go with Rebecca's three-point success point guards not too much different you can go double speed double three-point success which would be Pedro or you can go 
long distance three point this long distance three pointer with Chloe or if you want to go triple speed and three point success throw Bika on there for two guards nothing too much different from a point guard you do a double speed double three point success or what I've been seeing a lot of people do as of late instead of the three point success well, there's a couple of things you can switch. There's so much you can do with the, with the shooting guards, but to keep it simple, double speed, double three-point success. But a couple of other ways that they run it, um, instead of running speed, double speed on Walker, you take one of the speeds off and go with three-point resistance, or you can just go, just max out the three-point shot resistance. Or if you want to have one of those OP, OP Ox Queens, take one of the three-point successes off and put Ox Queens drive speed on, just, max out on both of them and that way you'll have one of those dribble god ox queens okay now for the food buffs i don't understand if you're not using these i don't know i, I don't know what to tell you but yes it's okay to use your food buffs if you're doing battle passes they give you food buffs to use i don't waste these during regs the only time when i use my food buffs is during rank so if you feel like there's something that your character does not have or you need some help with it Throw a food buff on before a match. The better food buffs are going to be the special cooking. The problem with the special food buffs is they require P points. They didn't always require P points to use, but now that they, but I want to say a few months ago, they added this little, the little wine and the mustard and the parsley, them little stupid things, and those cost P points. They give them to you free from time to time out of the village, but you don't, those are rare. Those don't really pop up like talking about, but to use those, yes, you're going to need P points. Majority of them cost like one P point for like one batch of mustard or something like that. But the ones towards the back of the list, those will cost like two P points to get. So some of these, they do give you free in the battle pass. Okay, so next tip is to have your character ready before you even queue up. When you play in rank, depending on what type of rank it is, if it's rank where you're gonna have multiple rounds or if it's a rank where it's just one round, have the character that you wanna play already available. So if I wanna play how, how needs to be already selected, my preset needs to be already selected before I hit ready. And if you don't know how to jump to your characters quickly, press up and down on the D-pad and it cycles through positions. So power forward, small forward, point guard two guard that's how you quickly cycle through each position just go up and down on the d-pad and then you go left right as far as which character i want to pick out of all the centers okay so when it comes to queuing up don't queue unless you're ready to play i get into too many matches where someone is just standing idle for the first four plays and then they come back and all of a sudden randomly start moving and they hit you with the star emote if you are not ready to play the game do not queue up now as far as when you want to queue if you're going to run with teammates it's best to run duos because the matchmaking is a little it's it's a little bit fair when you're matchmaking if you're running duos than it is if you're trying to run with three teammates if you're going to run three teammates, I would say it's better to run three teammates in the lower tiers. When I say lower tiers, I mean C rank, D rank, B rank, A rank. It's better to run trios in those tier matches versus trying to run it if you're double S. If you're double S trying to run trios, it will intentionally pair you with heavy comp. And you're not going to like those type of matchups because they will definitely they will give you longer queue times just so they can pair you up with three pc triple s players so your best bet just run duos because the matchmaking will be pretty much the same as if you were running so if you were solo queuing another tip as far as queuing if let unless if you feel like you're zoned in and you're locked in and you're just on a win streak then you just keep queuing up insta queuing and insta queuing that's fine but it is okay to pace yourself and give yourself a minute or two between each match if you find yourself going on a losing streak it's okay if you're going back and forth with wins and losses if you're trading wins you win one you lose one you win one you lose one you win two you lose one that's okay because you're still climbing the rank but if you find yourself going on 
three, four, five. I've heard of some people even going on eight, ten games stretches, losing consecutive games. It is okay to take a break. Hop off the game. Give yourself 10, 15, 30 minutes, an hour. Even if you feel like you just know what you're done for the day. Take a break. It is okay. Do not let yourself go on that that big of a losing streak. If I see myself losing three games in a row, I'm hopping off. So now we're going to get into stuff that actually goes on in game. So first tip when it comes to ranked inside the game. Now, majority of the ranks have a jump ball. Every now and then you get one that doesn't have a jump ball. It's a coin toss. So we're just focusing on the one that has jump ball. Let the bigs be bigs. Let the bigs go for the jump ball. If you are not playing big, you should not be trying to get the jump ball. Unless you have a OP chip out on William or Lou. You should not be under the you should not be trying to go for the jump ball. Let the bigs do what the bigs do and battle it out for the jump ball. The only thing you need to be trying to do if you are playing small is trying to play position. You don't need to try to just stand off in the corner and because if your big don't get the ball, then you're out of position to defend anybody. So the only thing you need to be doing as a small is finding the person you're supposed to be defending and just play position. That's it. Also, if you're running big, if you are matched up against a P5 Deacon, expect him to try to tackle you. If you're going against a Camilla, expect Camilla to do the touch pass. It's not many bigs that can get a rebound over that. So if you see a Camilla backing away from the jump ball, just be on the lookout to defend that pass. Because nine times out of ten, she's going to get that tip and it's going to go to somebody wide open. So just be on the lookout and be prepared to defend it. If you're matched up against a Fox or a Faye, expect them to do catch and shoot. That, that's pretty much what all of them do every time. Expect the catch and shoot. You can't really defend it. The only thing you can do is just hopefully they miss it and be ready for the rebound. If they get it, it's just expect it. It's, it's a bucket. That's just what it is. But that's Faye and Fox. Expect that. It's coming. The only other thing I would throw in there just as an honorable mention is if you just by some small chance see a big dog out there, just expect tip pass to come out as well too. That's also a thing. So... Be on the lookout for those as well. Next tip, spread the floor. Give your team space to operate. I see too many people when they get the ball and it's their possession that they all crowd at the top of the key. Go to the corners. And I ain't saying you got to go to the all the way to the deepest part of the corner. Because if, the, if your teammate needs to pass the ball, at least be in range for him to make an easy pass versus him taking a chance on throwing the ball away or throwing a bad pass to you because you deep off in the corner. Give that person space to operate. Everybody does not need screens. If you are the big, you do not need to camp the paint. Stretch the floor or at least look like an outside threat option. Look like you can shoot a mid-range. ain't saying you got to run a mid-range, Bill, but just look like you can shoot a mid-range. You don't have to sit under the rim the entire game. All you're doing is closing off options for the person who has the ball. If you have a, if you have an Ayla or a Chloe or an Ox Queen or a Joey, they need space to operate. So do not stand next to them while they're doing their dribble drive moves and the sham guys because all you're going to do is clamp them up and cause them to turn the ball over. Give them space to operate, but be close enough to receive a pass to bail them out if they need help or if they don't. Just be close enough to where if they pass you the ball, you're there to receive a pass and it's not a terrible pass. Now, if you're playing big and you're wondering, well, what am I supposed to do if I'm the big and you can't you're not supposed to camp the paint you can set screens now granted everybody does not need screens the ball handler does not necessarily need a screen some of some people it really depends on who you're playing with some people like screens some people don't usually they will tell you if they don't want you to screen if you try to screen for them you'll see a stop emote or go to an empty space something like that they'll let you know if they don't want screens right so if anything, if you set one screen and they give you an emo telling you not to screen or stop or something like that, go to empty slot. They'll let you know. They'll have something on them telling you that they don't want a screen. 
but that don't mean you just go to the paint and just do nothing you can set a backdoor screen for the other person and for them to get open you can do something else just don't stand in the paint because if they need that lane because they can't get a three they can't get the lane because you're standing there with a defender another tip for the bigs if you're a big and you're struggling to get rebounds because you just don't have the ping to deal with the person that you're matched up against and they're just rebounding over your back regardless if you get position on them or not the best tip that i can give you is that doesn't mean that don't mean you can't do anything else as the big you still can play defense if you're struggling to get rebounds sometimes the only option that you have is to box that defender out early so as soon as you see a shot go up you need to box them out early box them out don't even go for the rebound just keep backing them up let the ball come off the rim when it hit the ground you run up and grab it it does work it's harder to implement than you th it's not as hard to implement as you think it is but if you're dealing with someone that you can get position on them and box out but they're still snagging boards over your back sometimes that's the only way you're going to get it you might not get the rebound but you'll at least get the loose ball and it's still your possession so sometimes that's what you have to do small sometimes you might have to help your big out if your big can't get the boards sometimes you got to help them out if he's boxing out if you see him struggling to get boards and he's boxing out sometimes you're gonna have to run up and get that board but that's if you see him struggling all right and this one's pretty fairly simple straightforward keep track of your freestyles just press the d-pad button and see what freestyles you got coming up what and see what you have at your arsenal if you're not building your freestyles i don't know what you're doing you need to be working on them anyway build your freestyles up get some freestyles in your kit get you a trap card get you some quick points all that if you find yourself in a close match and you are up and you got less than 24 seconds on the shot clock it is okay to hold the ball you do not have to shoot the ball i i can't tell you how many times i've lost games simply because a teammate did not want to hold the ball if you are up by one score and you got less than 24 seconds and there is nobody on their team with a high steal stat or shadow steal or any just no one on their team that you know that can just flat out take the ball from you it is okay to hold the ball hold the ball it's so simple hold the damn ball listen to the countdown wait for it to get to two then throw it up you do not need to chase points if you're already up you chase wins stop chasing stats chase the win stuff like that will get you added to a blacklist just hold the ball now the best tip I can possibly give you as far as offense is play together go with the flow of the game you're not gonna be Kobe every every game sometimes it's best just go with the flow some y'all just like to force up stuff just go with the flow of the game I understand the whole premise of shooters shoot and that's fine but if your shot ain't falling there's a it's okay to hit that X button it is okay I'm letting you know nothing bad is going to happen if you hit that X button in most cases depending on who you play with they might even hit they might even pass the ball right back to you let you go around the screen so you can get a better shot. It is okay to reset the play. Go with the Florida game and play together. You're not going to be Kobe every game. It is okay to... It, ain't nothing wrong with running up 10 assists in the game. You ain't necessarily got to get up 10 shots. It's okay to get 10 assists. If those 10 assists are leading the, the 10 points on the board, you still winning. It's okay. At the end of the day, the goal is to win. Not to win and drop... 20 on everybody all right so now we're going to get into defense all right so for defense I got a few tips we're going to keep this short and simple so the first tip for defense um play the passing lanes all right just it's really that simple every position you should be playing the, if you're not on the ball handler you need to be playing the passing lane you want to take away passing options for the defender all together and try to force turnovers that's the easiest way to break that part down if you're the big you need to be fronting your man so that the ball handler cannot pass down to them as an option if you're the other defender you need to be also playing the passing lane to make sure that the ball handler doesn't have that option as well so if they're ripping and running all over the court just do your best to 
play the passing lanes. Do not hold the face up button until you are in the passing lane. That's when you want to hold it so that if they try to pass it, you can force that turnover. Next tip is you want to always rotate on defense. Do your best not to bite on pump fakes. If you do, your teammates need to be ready to step up and to pick up that man so they do not take the shot until you're able to rotate back into position to defend. So if someone bites on something, the next, the next closest defender needs to rotate to that character and then the other one rotates back until you can switch. So if you end up being the big and the big has to rotate on the guard, then you need to roll back, rotate back to the guard so the big can rotate back to his big. So there's no mismatches on the court. And this next tip is basically for defending all characters, but for the most part, primarily those who are struggling with Ayla's, Chloe's defending the Sham God, people with a lot of drive speed, best way to defend them is to play them from one side. You don't necessarily need to face guard them, but try to guard them from either the left side and force them to go right or guard them from the right side and force them to go left. At some point, they're going to come back and they're going to collide with you. It is a timing thing and it does take some skill and a little bit of luck sometimes to kind of get that collision to where they just turn the ball over but that's usually the best way to guard it pick a side and just press them to the other side also when you're going for steals don't just randomly spam the steal button trying to get random swipes all you're going to do is give up three pointers doing that and the best way to the only time when you really need to go for the steal is on bump collisions when you get that bump collision wait for them to stop once they stop dribbling then go for the instant swipe if you get it cool if you don't get it that don't mean keep swiping for the ball like go for it one time if you get it cool if you don't just still face them because nine times out of ten they're either going to shoot when you swipe again or they're going to get rid of the ball and you're basically going to give up points and position so just go for it one time if you get it most of the time if you got a high enough steal you will get that swipe either way but if you don't get it on the first try just don't go for it for a second time. Look for the shot or look for them to pass the ball out. Lastly, for the defense part, don't bite on the first pump fake. Most Ox Queens and Ayla's and Chloe's and Kim's, they do a move, pump fake, kick it inside to the big, look for you to jump. They rotate to the left or to the right, big kicks it back to them, and then they shoot on the second pass attempt. If you're able to defend that, then what they'll do is they'll do another crossover and reset the play. This is why I say it's always best to pay the, play the passing lane, especially if you're the big. That way, if they try to pass out of that, you're there to get the interception. But if so happens that they get it and they're able to get the pass back and the person does bite on the pump fake, that's when the center needs to rotate up to keep the ox or whoever is getting receiving the ball from shooting that three and then you just rotate back into position do your best not to bite on the first pump fake they do have some kims and some ox queens that do like the face shoot but for the most part the majority of them they're going to pump fake you on the first go kick it out wait for the pass back and then try to quick shot the second one so just be mindful of that all right now my final tip for rank would be just remember at the end of the day it's just a game and you just want to do your best to have fun with it i get it that rank people take rank a little bit more seriously than regs i know i do i don't even play the way i play in rank is not the way i play in regs i play totally different in regs and scrims versus what i do in rank so i get it people take rank very seriously but do your best to remember it. it's just a game and just do your best to have fun with it. Don't let it stress you out. Like I said, if you go into the game just expecting people, at some point you're going to get sold. It's part of the game. Everyone is not on the same skill level. Matchmaking is not going to always be in your favor. So you just got to do the best that you can do with what you got. That's why I'm putting this video out to try to help the community out overall for those who need it. Remember to try to have fun, play together. Everybody ain't hopping on rank to intentionally fail you. Granted, there are some people who will, and rightfully so, they deserve to be put on the blacklist. So, save a spot for them. Other than that, that's all I got for you. Oh.
hope this helps. If you take anything away from this and it works for you, cool. That makes my day. That'll do it for me. It's your boy D-Money. Like, comment, subscribe, all that other madness and like that. We go. Oh, and side note, I don't care what you say. I am the best Jason on this game and I'm the best big dog on this game. Nobody got a better Jason than me. Nobody has a better big dog than me. All right, now nah, I'm out. Don't at me. <laughs>